Ladies and gentlemen, hello. Um, the title of my today's presentation is Regeneration by White Blood Cell Derived Mechanisms. This is the work performed by my diploma student, Michael Lichtenauer. Um, we all are aware of multiple um, stem cell trials in the beginning of this M2000, where in the New England and the Lancet publication appeared where it was shown that stem cell can regenerate or prevent myocardial harm after myocardial infarctions. Um, especially German um, centers spearheaded these developments in stem cell research in AMI. In meta-analysis in consecutive years um, have shown in, due to the data of multiple trials that there is a mediocre but relevant and often significant um, benefit of stem cell therapy in patients who have suffered AMI compared to those who did not get um, um, stem cells. Um, there was most of the time in most trials the intercoronary route of stem cell application was advocated in these publications. Cell-based um, therapies and myocardial infarction was basically the trigger of all stem cell research in the last um, 15 years. Um, and um, multiple mechanisms were suggested why stem cells would be a benefit to the patients. And um, here I want to allude to a paper which was published in 2009 in clinical cardiology. Um, it was hypothesized that stem cells, when applied in the myocardium, that these stem cells undergo transdifferentiation. Um, other papers have suggested that stem cells, when applied in myocardial infarction, um, undergo stealth, um, cell fusion with the uh, existing myocardium and therefore have a, a benefit um, for the cardiac muscle substance. Um, in 2005, um, by the landmark paper of my colleague uh, Maximiliano Gnecki, um, the paracrine hypothesis was advocated. Here, as you can see here in the slide, um, it, is, um, it was speculated that stem cells, when applied to the patient, or in experimental settings in preclinical animal experiments, that these stem cells secrete paracrine factors and they activate cardiac stem cells, respectively, um, induce and proliferation of resident cardiomyocytes. Um, we know, and this is basically now accepted in the field, that um, fusion and transdifferentiation of stem cells into cardiomyocytes is not reality, but Paracrine factors and play the greatest role in these animals, in these stem cell treated patients um, treated with stem cells. Um, here, I just want to allude to a paper by um, Nikki, published in Nature Medicine in April 2005. So, in conclusion, as early as in 2005, it was known that paracrine factors of stem cells do benefit to patients, respectively, do attenuate myocardial infarction after. Um, application of um, cellular components of stem cells. So let's go back to basic science and I want to convince you that basically you might not need stem cells but you can also just need paracrine factors of white blood cells. But one by one um, we just here see one, um, my, um, one illustration of a myocardial infarction. Here you can see that um, here we have a occluded coronary artery and post stenosis you have the occlusion and here you've got the inflammation respectively the dying myocardium in AMI. This means apoptosis and necrosis is occurring in those animals. So that means again secretion of pro-inflammatory cytokines such as IL-1, IL-6, TNF-alpha and the amplification of inflammation takes place. As early as in 2005 um, Anker and TUM um, two Germans um, suggested in the YAC that the dying stem cell hypothesis. This dying stem cell hypothesis was pretty much clear forward and um, suggesting that tr um, transplanted autologous stem cells are already undergoing apoptosis and these cells are already inducing a sort of immune suppression, immune modulate, modulation and therefore um, attenuate myocardial infarction damage. This was generally accepted and basic science um, was published in the Journal of Clinical Investigation by the lead author, Dr. Fadok. So that means stem cell, when applied in the body, is inhibiting pro-inflammatory signals and therefore attenuating myocardial infarction. 
So my talk will gonna cover not stem cells. We are talking distinctively about white blood cells. So it means all data I'm showing you today is pertaining to white blood cells and not stem cells. This distinction has to be made very clearly. Methods. Um, looking at the stem cell papers, um, we, we could not find any control experiments. And we have seen a lot of data showing that stem cells is doing something good in myocardial infarction, but there was never a control experiment published in utilizing white blood cells. So our, our, our hypothesis was whether white blood cells can do something good um, in AMI preclinical experiments. So what we did, we um, utilized fax analysis, co-incubation assays, mixed lymphocyte reactions, RT-PCR, um, for determining immune function. And in the second step, um, we um, induced myocardial infarction, administered in those rats, wild-type rats, either medium, syngeneic white blood cells, viable, non-irradiated, and syngeneic irradiated white blood cells. And then do, did immune histological evaluation after three and six weeks. Furthermore, we also did some echocardiography in order to see some functional benefit of this treatment regimen. So going through the data, as you can see here, um, here we see histograms and we co-incubated PBMCs with, with, with LPS, so we stimulated white blood cells, and then in this process we also added apoptotic white blood cells. And what you could see, that pro-inflammatory cytokines such as IL-1 and IL-6 were decreased. So that means apoptotic white blood cells suppressed um, M M cytokines that are immune activating. In the next approach, we also performed mixed lymphocyte reactions. This is an assay where you can stimulate white blood cells with um, antigen-presenting cells, and that's basic uh, allo allotransplantation model in the in vitro setting. And again here, when you add white blood cells, which are apoptotic, you could see a decrease of immune function. So basically this data was, um, was supporting the hypothesis of Tumen Anker, um, which suggested that apoptotic stem cells are immune modulating the immune system. So we were able to show that apoptotic white blood cells were attenuating the immune system in vitro. In a third approach, we then looked for um, what's happening with white blood cells if they get irradiated. And we looked for um, three um, very important cytokine RT-PCR products. One is VEGF, interleukin-8, and MMP9. And again, you can see that when you irradiate white blood cells, you can um, get a massive increase of fold induction of MMP9, IL-8, and VGF. These factors are known to be functional in um, liberating and augmenting stem cell homing in the myocardium. This supported our notion, our expectation, and then we even f um, um, have driven this whole process further, and we then took white blood cells, separated them from the cultured medium after 24 hours, exposed the supernatant um, to um, fibroblasts, and as you can see here, if you expose fibroblasts with paracrine factors of irradiated white blood cells, you can see the same phenomena, augmentation of MMP9 and IL-8, not so much um, VGF. So that means basically white blood cells are secreting substances which um, are driving the process of augmentation of stem cell liberation. So what were the experiments which were then um, following? Um, this is an experimental setting. You um, take a wild type rept, so I definitely excluded all genetic backgrounds did not take rats with genetic alteration like athymic nude rats, but I took wild type rats. Um, we operated them, we ligated the left arterial, uh, left descending um, coronary artery. Then you can induce a, norm a norm normalized um, infarction in this animal. How does that look like? You anesthetize um, the um, animal, you um, make a dermal incision, you make an intercostal thoracotomy, and you prepare the heart, you ligate the LID, 
and thereafter you close the wound again. This is the experimental setting which we have used in our M setting. So, um, coming to the results, um, we did not use stem cells but white blood cells. So we took white blood cells of um, sister um, rats, separated them, brought them into culture medium, and um, irradiated these uh, cells to become um, apoptotic with 40 to 60 gray, and then let the culture go for 24 hours. This is the time which is needed to, um, to get to drive the white blood cells into apoptosis. And when you take these cell suspensions, the cells plus paracrine factors, and infuse this in animals with a myocardial infarction, we were able to show that here the myocardial infarction was completely abrogated as compared to controls. This means that not stem cells were doing the job, not stem cell um, properties um, had here in role, but just the paracrine factors plus apoptotic cells um, have had the effect on um, healing or preventing myocardial scarring in rat animals. So there was, of course, now the question, if you infuse apoptotic, irradiated apoptotic white blood cells into a rat, um, which has undergone an acute myocardial infarction, it is the question, where do these apoptotic cells end up? So what we then did, we took um, white blood cells, um, labeled them with CFSE, so they get a green um, dye into their into the cellular component and then we did the same thing we infused it into rats and after 72 hours we retrieved multiple organs of these animals and as you can see here the dyed and white blood cells were only found in the liver and in the spleen but none of these um, dyed cells apoptotic white blood cells were found in the heart so therefore we can speculate that um, these cells um, were just trapped in spleen and liver and other organs and this was basically the same what was published with stem cells. So if you infuse stem cells into a human body, respectively experimental animals, these animals, these humans, these stem cells never end up in the infarcted um, tissue of a heart but always in other organs. So looking at the um, HE histology after 72 hours, we were quite antagonized by this picture, what we have seen here. Here you see control animal, a control animal just um, having a myocardial infarction. Here we see an animal that uh, received viable, non irradiated white blood cells. This is a picture with lots of inflammation, edema. And those animals that received apoptotic PBMCs um, have evidenced a massive infiltration of cells that we couldn't identify. Basically, pathologists had huge um, problems interpreting this um, picture. So now we were searching what, what cell types are those observed in this histology. Um, here we see um, the data. So again, medium control, medium control, um, non-irradiated white blood cells, apoptotic white blood cells. Here you can see a massive augmentation of CD68 positive cells in those animals receiving our apoptotic suspensions. That means massive homing of macrophages. Moreover, we have also seen that these cells were in, in its totality VGF and receptor 2 positive. And then after doing some experiments, we then um, looked for one marker which is CKIT, and here we could see that there was a massive homing of CKIT positive uh, stem cells into the infarcted myocardium. That meant to us that um, our suspension of white apoptotic white blood cells was attracting or augmenting proliferation of CKIT positive cells in the myocardium. Results. The results, six weeks, here you can see definitely control. These animals just receiving my, um, medium, massive scarring. Those animals receiving viable PBMCs. Um, the scarring was already a bit reduced, um, up to tw um, 12 to 16 percent. And those animals receiving apoptotic white blood cells plus suspension, plus paracrine factors, um, had just minor infarction around 6 percent. Um, this was determined by image J evaluations. 
And um, the infarction area, as I alluded prior, um, about 25% in the control medium. Those animals receiving um, viable PBMCs, about 12 to 15%. And those animals receiving this apoptotic suspensions, the infarct area was around 6%. Echocardiography, again, ejection fraction. Here we see um, sham operation. Sham operation, 60%. Um, um, that's the normal heart function of a, a rat. Um, in these animals um, receiving um, no therapy, respectively, um, receiving no therapy, respectively, and viable PBMCs, they had um, a decrease of um, ejection fraction, of course, because there was no therapy, and those animals receiving our suspension had a normal, near to normal ejection fraction. That means that our treatment prevented um, ventricular remodeling as determined by echocardiography. This was also validated by shortening fraction and end systolic diameter. Significances you can read on the slide. So the conclusion of this talk is that administration of irradiated apoptotic PBMCs after myocardial infarction induces A, reduction of pro-inflammatory signals in vitro, upregulation of pro-angiogenic um, mediators such as interleukin-8 or MMP9, increased homing of secret positive cells, and a better recovery in cardiac function in those animals receiving um, apoptotic white blood cells plus paracrine factors, so apoptotic white blood cell suspension. Um, these are, uh, it says thank you to those who have worked in, in this project. Um, I just am, am going to allude to the departments. It's surgery, biomedical um, science, um, cancer research, um, dermatology, pathology, and also pediatric um, department. Thank you very much.